In the world of technology, some of the biggest shifts don't begin with innovation. They begin with conflict. We confronted untrustworthy Chinese technology and telecom providers. And that's exactly what happened when Huawei, one of the China's largest tech giants, found itself at the center of geopolitical storm. Not to use Huawei because we think it's an unsafe security risk. It's a big security risk. Back in 2019, during the height of US-China trade tensions, the Trump administration added Huawei to the US entity list. This move cut Huawei off from major American tech partners like Google, Intel, Qualcomm, and crucially Microsoft. At first, Huawei focused on its smartphone crisis, losing access to the full Android ecosystem including Google Play services, but quietly another major impact was unfolding. Huawei's access to Microsoft Windows was now under threat. Initially, Microsoft was granted a temporary export license, which allowed them to continue supplying windows to Huawei laptops. But that grace period was not indefinite. As of March 2025, Huawei's license to pre-install Microsoft Windows officially expired. And due to ongoing US sanctions, the company was unable to renew agreement. Without access to Windows, Huawei was faced a major challenge. But instead of relying on uncertain future negotiations, they accelerated their own software independence. This led to the unveiling Harmony OS Next, which means it's a Harmony operating system next in 19 May 2020. During Huawei's Computer Technology Conference, it marked debut of Harmony OS for PCs and laptops. A fully independent, microkernel-based operating system designed to replace both Windows and Android, especially within China. But how did it Huawei manage to develop such a complex operating system? It did not happen overnight. In fact, Huawei began internal R&D for Harmony OS as early as 2012, long before the trade war. After the 2019 sanctions, the development effort was supercharged. The company officially launched Harmony OS in August 2019. And in the years that followed, it gradually expanded across smart TVs, wearables, tablets, and smartphones. By May 2025, Huawei made matured system into fully capable operating system, free from both Linux and Android code. Technically speaking, Harmony OS Next is built on a custom microkernel, which provides better modularity performance and security compared to traditional monolithic kernels like Linux. This core system was entirely developed in-house by Huawei, not outsourced. And for software development, Huawei did not stop at building an operating system. They even created their own programming languages. One such language is ArcTS, which is Arc TypeScript, a modern language inspired by TypeScript, Swift, and Rust optimized for safety and performance. More recently, Huawei introduced Kenji, a high-level statically typed language built specifically for Harmony OS and its open source sibling Open Harmony. Kenji supports multiple programming paradigms from object-oriented to functional programming and reflects Huawei's goal of unifying application development across all device types. Harmony OS development relies on Huawei's Arc compiler, a powerful tool chain that complies multiple languages including ArcTS, JavaScript, C, C++, Kenji into efficient native code. The official IDE use is Devico Studio, which is based on JetBrains, IntelliJ platforms and provides everything developers need to build Harmony OS apps, from UI design to debugging and deployment. Importantly, the development of Harmony OS wasn't limited to Huawei's internal teams. Huawei also collaborated with several Chinese universities including Nanjing University, Tianjing University, and Bihang University. Especially during the development of Kenji, this broad collaboration ensured that Harmony OS wasn't just a product, it became a national tech initiative. By building Harmony OS from the ground up, Huawei gained full stack control from hardware with its in-house Kirin ARM chips to software Harmony OS plus App Gallery plus Huawei Cloud. This vertical integration is similar to Apple's approach, but with 
one major difference. Huawei did it under sanction pressure, not just market strategy. In terms of impact, Huawei shipped approximately 4 million laptops only in 2023, previously all running Windows. Given that Microsoft charges around 4 to $7 per Windows license, Huawei's shift could mean direct loss of 16 to $28 million per year in licensing revenue for Microsoft. Add to that the long-term losses in Microsoft 365 subscriptions, Azure cloud business and enterprise licensing, especially in China's government and state-owned enterprises, and the financial hit becomes much larger. China's represent around 10% of Microsoft global revenue and Huawei's move could accelerate a broader national transition away from US tech. Adding to momentum, Chinese government is now offering cash subsidies to buyers who choose laptops with Harmony OS over Windows. In some cases, as high as 2000 yuan or around 280 US dollar. This government support transforms how many OS from a product into a strategic pillar of China's technological independence. In conclusion, Huawei's transition from hardware OEM to full stack ecosystem provider is more than just a workaround. It's a response to a geopolitical reality. How many OS next represents a vision where a company once dependent on Microsoft and Google now built its own or alternative on its own terms. And while Harmony is currently focused on the Chinese market, it poses a serious question for the global tech landscape. If Huawei can create an independent ecosystem under pressure, what happens when they scale it freely?